Welcome back to the Military Exchange, and I'm your host, Corporal Tim Thornton, and I am here today with Mr. Barry Colhane and Jeremy Bagley, and they represent Valor Day, and we're going to have you tell us a little bit about what's going on. I love the concept of one-to-one -one legal consultations, and you have a lot to do with the Vietnam Veterans Wall. So, uh, Jeremy, if you're the spokesman... Uh, how are you, sir, and welcome to the show. Hey, Tim, thanks for having us on. Uh, one Team, One Fight presents Valor Day. Uh, just to go a little bit backwards in history, One Team, One Fight is an organization of service providers. We get together as a working group, so there's no real formal organization with us, uh, but it's all people who either their primary or their secondary function as an organization is providing services to veterans and their families. Uh, we get together with C-level folks, directors, chief executives, and instead of saying something is a good idea for serving vets, we say on the spot, yeah, this is a good idea and we're going to do it. There's over 50 organizations, part of One Team, One Fight in the greater Rochester area. They include organizations like the American Red Cross, uh, Veterans Outreach Center, all the 18 colleges and universities and the Rochester area colleges of the RAC, and anyone who uh, has, again, a primary or secondary role in serving veterans and their families, including the uh, good folks down here at the Canandaigua VA. Nice. And you also said it your conjunction with or their vets court yeah vets court's part of it uh the uh, founding uh, vet court judge here in rochester and we have the second uh vet court in the country is uh, patricia marks and uh, she's a okay. pioneering and founding member of one team one fight stands behind it a bunch and i think all of us know all the great things she's done for veterans and their families in our community and it keeps on going because she's starting a women's uh, veterans initiative that's really taking out very well and uh the group of us, I'm the old guy in the group, uh, Vietnam era uh, guy. Uh, the rest are Iraq, Afghanistan, Bosnia, and different uh, uh, areas where they've served. Uh, but I had gotten so involved in the Vietnam Veterans Memorial, uh, wrote everything in it, loved going down there. I went down with these guys, and uh, we decided that we wanted to do something where nobody gets paid, everybody gets involved, can check their egos at the door. And I hate to say it, but no politicians. Uh, <laughs> so, so, so Barry, uh, yeah, Barry, this is uh, pro bono. Is what oh, you're yeah, saying, all right? of it. Yeah. And then by meaning no egos, uh, one lawyer wouldn't be able to take a, a high-profile case from another guy. No way. No way. It's all uh, catch as catch can. They'll set up half-hour appointments. If they need more, they'll come back. But it's, uh, it doesn't cost them anything. It could be something related to bankruptcy, related to uh, their banking in general, divorce. Uh, maybe they've gotten in trouble with the law, whatever is going on, and they need uh, an attorney. It's free of charge because that's the way it should be for veterans who've served. I'll tell you, that's, that's really amazing. Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to come up with a question. I think you laid it out pretty well. Uh, if you're going to give the veterans uh, some free counseling and somebody they can depend on, how far does that go? Like, say I committed the crime, yeah. and then, uh, you know, now I'm being arraigned, and now I have to appear in court, but it's something that takes a year. Now, would I still have access to the same lawyer? That part we're not sure about because it's our first time doing it. However... We have a good feeling that anybody who gets involved with a veteran is going to continue on because they have volunteered to do this. Over 40 lawyers uh, definitely going to get involved with this person, and not just for a half an hour, but after that. And it might involve them a referral, but uh, maybe he's not a criminal you know, attorney in the example you used, and maybe uh, he needs one. So he would refer them to somebody else who would help them out. So I think yeah. uh, not only is this uh, going to happen, but... Because we brought so many, we're bringing so many veterans together. Uh, like I said, Vets Court, but uh, Veterans Outreach Center, all kind, uh, the VA, Monroe County veterans. Everybody's going to be there, just in case they also come along with some other things that they really need. And uh, who knows? But uh, what we want to do is create a warm, welcoming atmosphere of people who've served in the military and really care about our veterans. Yeah, so you're building up a, a team. Oh, absolutely. And that team can rely on each other. You know, I, I mentioned a lawyer earlier that you know. Yeah. And uh, quite often, if I needed to answer something that uh, my friend couldn't do uh, or maybe didn't know as much about, he would 
he would call another guy, yeah. mm -hmm. and they would say, "Look, this is uh, this is what my another lawyer said." Well, you know, this is exactly what happens, Tim. And I had this happen with uh, one of the local judges here in Canandaigua, who called up and said, "There's a guy here. He's really messed up. He's done some bad things. He's going to get some time, but he needs help." And so I picked up the phone, our email addresses to Jeremy and uh, Judge Pat and a bunch of other people. And within 30 minutes, somebody was on it. They came down to the courthouse. They met the guy. They gave him some options. They told him some services were available. Um, now, this is just something this guy really needed right at that moment. So that's what we want to encourage everyone to do in all different professions. So we're starting with law. Yeah, so what, well, if a guy needed uh, mental health help, if a guy needed uh, help from being homeless, you're you're putting together a team that can help out several different ways. Absolutely. This is the first event that we've uh, categorized by one of the six core areas that we've identified as problems for transitioning veterans and their families and also veterans who've been out for 40 years and still struggling with some things. Uh, legal services, uh, medical, mental health, employment, uh, and housing are the uh, five or six key areas that we'll have an event on, and a special event on throughout the course of the year. But this this uh, Saturday, June 13th at Monroe Community College, starting at 9 a.m., uh, you can get services for all those other areas, but the primary focus is going to be on legal. And if you go to uh, google.com backslash Rochester Valor Day, you can actually sign up in advance for the services that you need, and an attorney will be assigned to you via email before you ever show up on MCC's campus. So this is a great opportunity for us to not just go in and say we want to do something great as far as legal services for veterans, but we're going to be proactive and be ready so when that veteran or their family member comes to the door, someone's already going to have a file on them and be ready to go. So we won't be wasting their time. So I get that if a guy gets in trouble or even if he's just buying a house uh, and you, you're, you're able to help him, what about being an advocate? You know, actually saying to this guy, you know, you're being mistreated. This isn't correct, and we're going to be an advocate for you. Or also, another question I would have is, is the VA involved in this too? Are they, uh, they helping are. you guys yep. out? Yeah, and we have uh, uh, veterans advocates from all of the major veteran services organizations too. The one thing we wanted to do when we first set out with One Team, One Fight is not replicate services that are already being done, but enhance them and point big, giant neon arrows towards them. Because, you know, I'll be honest with you, as an Iraq War veteran, I came back to Rochester seven years ago, and it was about two years before I even knew there was a Veterans Outreach Center or that there was a bunch of places that I could go to get help for some things that I really could have not wasted those two years on. And so what we wanted to do was just create a, a viable and powerful network to be able to help uh, accentuate the services that are already there and make them more available to the other 95% of our population who doesn't serve so that they can take part in it too. So now we've got over 50 services that are coming together every six weeks. They're finding out what the other people do. They're realizing that there are some pieces of this missing. They're bringing in other people who fit for that. So for example, let's say some, there aren't a lot of services for women veterans and uh, right. uh, there've been a quarter of a million uh, women veterans in Iraq and Afghanistan. So we better wake up and pay attention to this uh, uh, because this is something that we must address as a society, and we owe these people. And so by us expanding communication, not getting to the point where we're going to build our own separate 501c3, start asking people for money, there are other organizations that are out there that take money, do things, and there are uh, good people who do things for free, and there are others who do things extremely well, and that's what we want to communicate. That's nice, because you know, you're right. At this point, you know... We probably don't need more non-for-profits, you know, asking for more money to do stuff for vets when there already are established groups. Well, the VA for one should. Right, the VA, yeah, the ZFW, the American yeah. Legion. Yeah. Um, just a quick one out there. When I first came home from the Gulf War, there was talk uh, quite heavily that these people locally wanted to start their own VFW of just Gulf War vets. Uh-huh. Now, I think it would have been a small little group. Yeah. Uh, you know, there was a lot of us, but still, uh, it's unnecessary. Yeah. Those organizations are there. And we should be supporting them. Well, you know, even today, Tim, you know, the VFWs and American Legion posts are declining. Yeah. I think Jeremy and his uh, uh, peers are using social media big time. 
but you could address that. How oh, are you? Yeah, well, tell us about that. Well, I think, you know, uh, advocacy in general, a lot of nonprofits, as a matter of fact, most of the nonprofits are seeing a decline in numbers of people that are participating because you can go online, start a grassroots campaign, and make hundreds of thousands of dollars for an organization you believe in without even leaving the comfort of your house. You know, the beauty of the internet is it's created a, a world full of people who can be international business people without ever leaving their home. Well, it's the same thing with, on the nonprofit side. I think, though, at the, the core of this is that we have to realize as a generation that we have strength in numbers. And that part of the reason why we've got such great benefits that we have right now is because so many generations before us came back and fought for them. And so while it's great to have this online advocacy, it's important to remember that nothing will ever replace being there in person, standing together with our brothers and sisters, and making Washington, D.C. and our state capitals aware of the fact that we fought for what we believe in, and we're also going to continue to fight for the benefits for our brothers and sisters who come after us. And so while online adv advocacy is great, uh, I, I strongly encourage any young man or woman out there who's just left the military service or doesn't think they're a veteran. You know, so many people think that if they didn't go to war or if they weren't injured that they're not a veteran. To look at their local VFW, look at their local legion, look at their local DAV or any of the groups and vets and be part of it. Yes. Because the only way we're ever going to continue to move our uh, benefits forward is if we do it in large and loud numbers. Uh, the Vietnam generation said never again will one generation of veterans abandon another. That's a task that I would challenge every generation of veterans to say after they leave the service. That's right. The reason why we have it so good today is because of the Vietnam veterans. Absolutely. Because when they came home, we know how they were treated. And when their sons and daughters decided to serve and then they came home, Gulf War, Iraq, Afghanistan, they put their foot down. Yeah. I can guarantee you that, and I can prove it. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that said, you're not going to, you could talk bad about the war, you're not going to put down the soldier. Right. And uh, the other thing I wanted to say was, yeah. you know, my it's my <clears> biggest <throat> thing in life, uh, but going back again to, uh, I, I guess I could say, uh, an attorney that I had as a friend also, John Furr. And I, I'll, you know, John, I don't know that he ever charged me for anything, but the biggest thing that he did for me was whenever I called, even to this day, and he's retired and running mm, around on his yeah. boat, but uh, I sent an email. I mm. always got an answer back. Mm -hmm. And the biggest thing is when you're, you know, maybe you're in trouble or maybe you're doubtful or you don't know where you stand with something legally, the, the biggest thing is to get a quick answer yeah. right away to kind of know, let you know where you are. Yeah. Mm. And John was always always good about returning mm -hmm. that call immediately and I, and I and I would say that that's one of the biggest comfort things yeah. uh, is knowing where you are I mean, what, what vet doesn't want to know what his uh, grid coordinates are what it matters. right I, yeah I think that's one of the reasons why we created this working group is because uh, the veteran population and their families have gone through a lot they've moved from place to place to place they fought wars for the last decade and a half uh, veterans as a population are a lot like the state of Missouri show me you know, they you're used to hurry up and wait and people telling them things, but they want to see it. And the reason we created this network is so that we could show them because there's a lot of great intentions out there, but sometimes it's just words. And together as a powerful unit, uh, a combined joint network of service providers, we can show vets our appreciation. We can show their families what they mean to us by providing action. And just like Barry was talking about earlier, we've had vet veterans come back to our community who were looking for a job, had all the qualifications, and didn't have a network. And at 11 o'clock at night, I'll email Barry, and Barry will email Todd Baxter at the Veterans Outreach Center. And by 9 o'clock the next morning, we have the person two or three interviews by the end of the week. I mean, that's the power of a network of people who check their ego at the door and do what they yeah. do for veterans and their families and not themselves. We had an electrician who needed tools. That's all he needed to get this job. And so we got it out to our network within 24 hours. He had a set of tools from a retiring electrician who wasn't going to use them anymore and gave them to this guy. It's those kinds of simple little things. Veterans know who's real and who's not. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't take long. But if out of our relationship that, that developed June 13th, uh, people get the relationship like you've had with John, even if it's half of them, boy, that's a great step forward. Because you're right, they want simple information. It's something they don't know. So tell me some, some give me somebody who can really be a resource for housing, for education, for career, for law, whatever it is. 
and give it to me quickly because I don't want to stand in line and I don't want to just uh, wait forever for something I need right away. Yep. So. That's right. And we know this event's on a summer Saturday. It's on June 13th again at 9 a.m. at MCC, which is the day before Flag Day. And uh, what better day to come out and really take care of yourself. You know, our vets and their families have done a great job of taking care of our country. Every once in a while, you need to take a Saturday on as opposed to a Saturday off and take care of yourself. Uh, in addition to all the services that are going to be there for legal, as well as housing, employment, uh, any of the other services that veterans may need, we're going to have food there and we're going to have some entertainment. So if you want to bring your family out, you know, there'll be things there for the kids to do while you're getting your uh, legal services taken care of. And all those things are thanks to our good friends at New York Law and the New York Bar Association. Great. And this is all at the Monroe Community College. Absolutely, sir. Yeah. Starting on uh, 9 a.m. January 13th, which is a Saturday. About two weeks from now. And that's in the Warshaw Conference Room, which is in the Flynn Building. So it might be pretty ominous to think about all of MCC, but uh, it's really easy to get to. There's a lot of parking. And the point is that once you get inside, you're going to have a lot of friends. And if you don't feel like you have needs, find a buddy who's got some needs. Bring Put your arm yep. around, bring them down, that's right. enjoy the food and entertainment, and help this guy or woman uh, get something done that they need to have done. Very good. So I'll tell you what, the world needs guys like you. Thank you very much. Well, we appreciate everything you do. Thank it's you been a pleasure service. to be here. Thank you Tim. very much, Tim. Thank you, Thank you, Tim. Thank you very much. Right. Thanks Thank a you. lot. Old Glory. Stars and Stripes. Red, White, and Blue. The A flag. The American flag. The flag that has flown above every rooftop to guide on. Battleships, camps, forts, and fobs. The American flag bears the crimson color of blood that has kept our flag as pure as the white bars that flank the blue field of honor. The Military Exchange is proud to present Valley Forge American-Made Flags. 100% American-Made, real issue. We sell flags by the military branch, unit, or division. Army, Air Force, Navy, Coast Guard, National Guard, Marine Corps. We sell flag poles, mounts, and display cases. Show your pride. Display your branch proudly with a flag from Valley Forge. The Gatson, don't tread on me flag and decals. Perfect for the conservative New Yorker. Join the military culture that is the Military Exchange. Located in Canandaigua, New York, check out our weekly video broadcast of our radio show at ironmikesmx.com.